Strangely, many of us know the feeling of loneliness all too well. We all have parts of ourselves that no one will truly understand. In my interview with Dr. Kelly Flanagan, author of True Companions, he explained, loneliness is one of the most misunderstood words in the English language. And it is one of the most misunderstood experiences in the human condition. The theologian and psychologist Henry Nouwen put it this way, To live a spiritual life, we must first find the courage to enter the desert of our loneliness and change it by gentle and persistent efforts into a garden of solitude. However, the movement from loneliness to solitude is the beginning of any spiritual life because it is the movement from the restless senses to the restful spirit, from the outward reaching cravings to the inward reaching search. In a previous episode titled How to Be Alone, we discussed that learning to be alone is a path to peace and connection, one of life's many paradoxes. As Thomas Merton described in No Man is an Island, I quote, The one who fears being alone will never be anything but lonely, no matter how much they surround themselves with people, end quote. Paradoxically, we can find peace and connection by learning to be in solitude. But this is much easier said than done. In the way of the heart, Nowen writes, It is in this nothingness that I have to face my solitude. A nothingness so dreadful that everything in me wants to run to my friends, my work, and my distractions so that I can forget my nothingness. The task is to persevere in my solitude, to stay in my cell until all my seductive visitors get tired of pounding on my door and leave me alone. The wisdom of the desert is that the confrontation with our own frightening nothingness forces us to surrender. Whether you stop what you're doing right now or schedule time for solitude later, you'll likely experience the type of resistance that Nowen describes. The path is to practice solitude despite the opposition. When we find the courage to enter the desert of our loneliness consistently, we begin cultivating a garden of solitude.